I've always been interested in that connection between theater and urban life, trying to bring that energy of theater to this small village and to expose it to the street to make it visible. And in the end, this building, it faces the community, it opens to the community, and it provides a place for the community to gather. The site is really between two parks and we wanted to connect to this beautiful site and these trees, gorgeous oaks around here. It, it made sense to make a building using wood. I mean, wood is a renewable material, so it's, it's very low impact on the environment. And we used state-of-the-art technology to create these giant trusses that span the space. And the trusses, which are Virendil trusses, then support this wood lattice beyond, which is carrying the walkway around the atrium. I call it a canopy walk because you, it gets you up into the canopy of the trees and the surrounding parks. So all the wood that's here is necessary and it's actually doing what it's good at doing. It's working in tension, it's working to span. And with wood, it's not even allowed in the code to use it this way. So we had to go further and, and test it to show that it would work. The search is for a solution which is complete and elegant and self-consistent. Something which is honest to the materials to the way of building and to the use. A piece of wood is very strong in tension, but the challenge is how do you hold on to it? How do you join the piece of wood so that you can make use of its enormous tensile strength? We found a cedar called Port Orford cedar, and this is a cedar which has an exceptionally straight grain. In fact, it was used by the Native Americans to make for arrows because you can make an arrow just by splitting it along the grain and it will be dead straight. Secondly, it's a wood that has this a very strong characteristic cedar smell. It provides the rot resistance, it, um, it keeps away the microbes. It's not widely used in building, so we had to learn a lot about it. We had to learn how strong it was in certain ways, how far it would bend, how it responds to steam treatment. And then it was that information that determined the geometry of the cat's paw itself. You can't just design something like this in, on, on a computer and then just bid it out. You really need to work together with the craftsmen, with, with the people making it. And, and that's what I love about architecture. And when we found Trillium Dell, who is this incredible skilled group of craftsmen, it was, it was a great match because they, they got the concept, they, they figured out how they were gonna do it, we, you know, they invited us out and we even, they even let me make a little piece of it, just a small piece, but you really saw how this building was going to come together. What we did here was we reused the brick that was in the building that used to be on this site and meticulously picked up each brick, knocked the, the mortar off, and then they sorted and palletized this brick. And then we reassembled the brick till we got the best geometry so that when an actor is performing, they don't have to shout, they can just be natural. Also the clusters of the seating was broken up to make mini communities because the key thing we were shooting for was the intimacy between the performance and the members of the audience. Their brand of theater is really one that's true to the written word. They really like to have their actors perform in a natural way and not in an affected or stylized manner. And that resonated with us in terms of how we like to treat the material of architecture, how we like to express it. And I think the space exemplifies that, you know, you feel what the materials are for what they are. And 
there's not really a lot of extra, but with the pieces that we use, we try to make them really add to the character of the space.